shut down your computers. We don't need your computers. All the screens should be off. And don't just switch off the screen, shut down the computer. Do a soft shutdown of your computer. Okay? <laughs> I don't know if he, if he comes outside the time he won't be present. Okay, uh, I think Kusha you can go now. Uh, I think if we have a problem with your login then I'll call you back. Okay guys, now I'm going to show you how to uh, create your trading account, I mean log into your trading, uh, create the sub account. Okay, so what we are doing now is, yes, we are getting ready for, okay guys, we are just getting ready with our backup, all the screens should be off, who's that over there next to Pranav? Switch up, switch off the screen. Not the screen, shut down the computer. We don't want to waste the computer power right now. We don't need the computer. Shut down the computer. Do a soft shutdown of your computer. Okay, everybody. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that we can operate our backup software in, the, in case the TWS doesn't work. In any case, quiet please. Guys, please be quiet as well. I'll start with up your marks. Okay. So we're going to show you how to log into the uh, create the sub account in uh, in your Rwanda uh, trading account. Okay, guys, the alarm has gone off, so anyone who comes in now will not get attendance. <laughs> How can there be no chair? There's a chair over there. Where? Next to Sina. I don't think they have removed any chairs from here. Shut it down. Shut down the computer, guys. Alright, is everyone following? This is where you come in, just search for Rwanda FX Trade and then go to sign in. So, in, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to uh, first log in through the, in order to create the sub account, it's much simpler to do it through the uh, web interface. So, we're going to log in through the web and what you have to choose is FX Trade Practice. This is the real money trading account, so you can't trade, click on this, you have, to trade, uh, you have to click on this. So, click on FX Trade Practice. Okay, murmurs, no murmurs here, please quiet, become quiet so that we can concentrate on the class. Okay, so I'm going to enter a new account ID here because this one is I just discovered yesterday uh, that uh, you can actually talk to the help desk if you have any problems. Okay, just find, find the help desk and talk to them. Okay, I'm going to use a different ID. Well, just hold on one second. Okay, is everyone following up to this point? You guys all have your own IDs. So here you're going to enter your own IDs. And I hope this works. That I haven't entered anything wrong. Alright, so when you log in through the web interface, this is what you get. Okay, so you can just directly click on add sub account. Okay, so this is what you get when you do add sub account. So I'm going to do this new FX trade account. I think uh, you just go for version 20 FX trade, don't worry about the meta trader. For those of you who are interested in algorithmic trading, you can create a separate account. MT4 is actually a, uh, it's an algorithmic trading, it's a, it's a language. They have a language in it as well, it's like a programming interface. <coughs> so you can create, uh, you know, you can design technical trading systems in MT4. That should actually be a separate course, okay, designing a technical trading system. But for that, you first need to have you need to have the domain knowledge of uh, technical analysis so that you have to have the theoretical knowledge so that you can then combine it with some programming logic and then create the system so that you can do for yourself on your own okay enable hedging leave it off account option name okay let's just give a name um, 
I'm in FM. All right. Then currency should be US dollars. Okay, so one of the things you can see here is, do you see any Indian rupee? No, because it's not a convertible currency. So in, in fact, what you can learn from this set of currencies is, these are the major convertible currencies in the world, okay? Except for the HKD and the, the Hong Kong and the Singapore dollar are kind of minor currencies. All right. Okay, so we'll come to this later on. Let me finish this. Um, <coughs> Okay, all right. So select currency, if you go to select currency, you can also learn from this, what are the world's major convertible currencies, okay? So if you go to any major financial center like Zurich, London, New York, you can open accounts in any of these currencies. That's why they accept account opening in each of these, any of these currencies, okay? That's why you don't see countries, uh, you won't get attendance, okay? All right, okay, so uh, this is what you do here. You have to choose US dollars, okay? Select leverage, just go for maximum leverage. We are going to, uh, we are going to select 100 to 1. Uh, let me also explain what this uh, maximum leverage is. In between, I'll just take the attendance and then we'll come back. Okay, so you're setting up this account. Give it a name. Currency should be US dollars. Leverage you can choose as 100 is to 1. <coughs> okay, does everyone understand what is meant by leverage? There's too much talking going on here, guys. Does everyone understand what is meant by leverage? Yes, sir. High debt. High debt. Okay, if I have, no, leverage is high debt, fine. Leverage is uh, debt, you can say. Leverage is actually debt, and high leverage would be high debt, okay? But in, in this in this context, in the account opening context, when this guy is asking you what kind of, you see that you have a choice in terms of leverage? Do you see that you have a choice in terms of leverage? Can you see that? You can choose various uh, multiples for leverage. I'm telling you to choose 100 is to 1. What does that mean? If you have a 100 is to 1 leverage, what does that mean? I'm able to put in 100 rupees by depositing 1 rupee. Okay. So what the Dr. is saying is correct. He could have phrased it a little bit better. 100 is to 1 leverage means that you can put on a position with a value of 100. Remember we discussed that transaction where you were talking about uh, buying crude oil and uh, buying one contract of crude oil at $70 per barrel. So if one contract is worth is equal to 1000 barrels, okay? That means when you buy one contract at $70 a barrel, the value of your position is $70,000. Is everyone clear about this? So leverage is nothing but mathematically position value divided by equity. Equity means essentially the cash you put up, okay? The cash you put up from your side, that is the equity. If you take a broker loan or something like that, that would be the debt and that would be the size of your balance sheet. But essentially what leverage means is, you can just remember it as position value divided by account equity. Okay, so that means you can control, you can take, you're allowed to take a position with a value of $100 by having only $1 of equity in your account. So still, that's what 100 to 1 means. Leverage of 100 is to 1 means that with $1 of equity in your account, you are allowed to put on a position which has a value of $100. Position value, remember, from the transaction of crude oil, you buy one contract of NYMEX crude at $70 a barrel, that contract stands for 1,000 barrels. So the position value is $70,000, okay? Is everyone clear about this? So position value divided by account equity is your leverage. So here I'm asking you to choose 100 is to 1 so that we can maximally exploit the system. Okay. All right, so choose 100 is to 1. Then 
Um, all right, let's now save. This is a new account. Account name is this is a new sub account. I hope everything works. The system has been giving a lot of problems. Why is it not showing? On it now, but see, there's some software error. Can you see that unexpected token in JSON? Now, there's some software error here. I don't know what to do on this. Um, I should try to do this in okay, guys. Now, let's do, let's hope that when you do this, they won't have this software error. Okay, I don't know why I'm getting the software error, but you hopefully you won't have it when you when you do this. So, everyone follows the steps. Okay, so now that you've created the sub account in your um, in your um, FX in, uh, through the web interface. Now, what you has everyone got uh, this icon on the desktop? Yes. Oh, and the desktop practice. Yes. Sir. Okay, you've got this icon. So, click on it. Make sure you have Java on your system because you need it both for your TWS and for your uh, Oanda. Okay, so latest version of Java has to be on your system. Make sure it's regularly updated. Okay, so you get this pop-up. Now here you enter your account credentials once again. so long to load okay all right so this is the uh, Oanda FX trade practice software this is our backup it'll be a good thing in a way that you will get to know uh, you will become familiar with two different pieces of software okay the TWS which is much more complex okay and it's actually more sophisticated because the software has some naming errors and all that but it's actually quite a good software for foreign exchange trading so just play around and uh, find out how this stuff works okay what you're going to do is once you go here check an account check uh, check to see that your um, did my account get created yes okay so it did get created okay so when you when you go back into the software interface in the desktop software interface and go into account and change account you will see the option of your sub account which you have just created okay uh, interestingly it did not ask me for the funding amount okay I need to get uh, a large amount of funds into the account because <coughs> I want to see the funding uh, the amount that they have put into the account so if you go to so if you go to view and um, account summary then you'll see the account summary okay so they've just created the account there's no default amount of deposit okay so you have to deposit funds separately into the account okay so the account is created let me just go to uh, they've changed the system a little bit let's look at my account because earlier what used to happen is that well, I haven't opened a sub account here for some time earlier what used to happen is that when they opened a new account they would automatically ask you also for the amount of money you want in that account interestingly enough in that um, in our um, 
Did you see that option when I was entering the data? Was there an option for amount of money? Sir, but, but it will ask. No, but I, it I, never asked. I entered some amount, so it was asking after trading the amount that you have zero balance. So it will ask now. But you got the error. I got the error, that's why. Okay, okay, fine. So let's see manage funds. I don't know if we can if I can do it through manage funds. So in case in your case it asked you. And how much did you add? No, no, that's not enough actually. You need to uh can add more Yeah, I mean Yeah, so what we'll have to do is so you do this, your account is ready. Okay, so if it asks you, uh, you just enter 100 million, okay? Just enter 100 million dollars because we want to make sure we have enough amount and then we have a leverage of 100 is to 1. Because we don't want to, having more money in the account is better than not have it, than having less money. Because you may not use the entire account equity, but if you have less account equity, uh, that enables, uh, that prevents you from doing the project properly, we don't want that situation. So, when, so let me show you what that's from. Yes. When you created a sub account, what happened to the next step? So Once you click save, I uh, click save. Okay, so I deposit. Okay, so it didn't actually directly ask you for a. Okay, and so then you click through deposit. Okay, because earlier it used to actually ask you at the time of creation, just like account leverage, it used to ask you for. Okay, is everyone following along what is to be done? Then you go to deposit. I hope they haven't put any limits. Add funds, select. Okay. See now, because I think this, did you get this invalid prompt? Sir, once you enter the mode, it will show valid. Okay, okay. So here we want to enter 100 million. 100. Okay. Yes, proceed. Okay, so now you're rich. Everybody's rich now. Okay. All right, so you have a hundred million dollars in your account. Hopefully, that will show in the software interface without having to re-log in. Yes. Is everyone noticing now that I can see the money in my soft in my uh, uh, the, the software the the client? Okay. All right, so fund deposit is showing the fund deposit under activity, okay? So now what we have to do is, now we have to make sure, so this is where you don't need two accounts for this for each group. And I, I think uh, the other uh, the other point is that in this software, unlike the TWS, TWS does not allow simultaneous logins from the same ID, okay? But this, at least the last time I checked, because I haven't tried simultaneous login in a long time, but it used to allow, and hopefully it will still allow, simultaneous logins from the same ID. Okay, so all of you can practice on the same ID. But the only thing I'll be careful about, so there is some limitation on the number of sub accounts. So don't go to town on it. Okay, try to be a little bit, you can open one or two, I think there's a limit of 19 or something like that, but it's still stopping me even though I don't have 19. So this sub account business is acting up a little bit. So whenever you need something, you open it, open another sub account for your practice. But the best way to do it is that, uh, you'll see this when you log in, okay? When you log in, what will happen is, Okay, when you log in, what, what you see, yeah, you see this primary account, okay, I don't know why they open this account in, okay, so maybe for whatever reason I must have opened this account as a, a Aussie dollar primary account. Did you follow what I did? So I went to account, I went back to account primary, okay, right now, so whenever you log in by default, unless you change the profiles civic settings. By default, it will take you into primary. This is your primary account, and the primary account, at least used to be open, is still being opened with $100,000. Okay, you can see here there's a loss of uh, something, so this is about $100,000. So what you should do is the simplest way to do it is if you don't want to create additional sub accounts for practice with more money in it, you make sure you do all your practice in the primary account. And this account that I've just created, the sub account that I've just created, you guys all should create a similar sub account, which is going to be used for your actual project trading. So that one you don't touch. So all your practice has to be done in the primary account. 
or if you want to create a separate account for practice, you create another sub account for practice. Is everyone clear? Yes. But you should be very clear from the beginning itself. You should earmark a particular account. You should earmark a particular sub account for uh, the actual project training, and that should not be touched before the start of the project. Can we make that account prior to the project? So no, you can do that also, but it's safer. It's a little safer to do it. I know what you're saying. You'll be on the safe side. But in case that you have a problem at the end, it's better to create it at the beginning and be careful. Okay? You have to remember. You have to be careful in, in these matters. If you're going to be a finance, uh, if you're going to be working in the finance industry, you need to have an eye for detail. You need to be very meticulous. Because otherwise, you could make small mistakes here and there, which will create problems. So you have to develop that habit. The reason I want you to do it early is that I don't want any headaches that come up at the last minute. Okay? So is everyone following this point? Okay, so then your practice will happen either in your primary account or in a separate sub account you want to set up for practice. Okay, all right. So now what we have to see is what we want to set up in this account because this project will involve uh, trading in. This project is going to focus on a case which is, yeah. So in this project, you'll be dealing with this particular balance sheet. This is a clear case that I've written, which is, uh, you know, so essentially you'll be trading in uh, these are the, uh, uh, the markets that you'll be trading in. Okay, hopefully if we get the GWS to work, in addition to this, you will see, uh, you will also be trading in three month Euro dollar futures. Okay, three month Euro dollar deposit futures. Okay, so if we work on GWS, we will be trading exclusively on futures contracts, using futures contracts. Whereas if we trade, we are forced to trade on a vendor, we'll have to trade with using these CMD contracts, which you see on your screen right now. Not right now, but in the OANDA software. Okay, so the markets you're going to have to trade, you can start following the markets using charts and all that. Gold, okay, international, the spot gold market. Copper, if you trade in the US, uh, if you trade in TWS, you'll be trading in gold futures on the COMEX, but they will also track the spot gold price. So you can follow, if you want to get a feed for the market, you can follow the spot gold price. Okay, uh, gold, copper, oil, and then in the dollar yen, in the yen loan. Okay, because this is a dollar balance sheet, you will have to trade in dollar yen. Okay, and again because this is a dollar balance sheet and there is a Aussie dollar loan, so again you are exposed to the Aussie dollar US dollar exchange rate. Okay, so the Aussie exchange rate. So those are the markets you'll be focused on. And then one of these loans, when you read the case, you'll see that one of these loans is in a, at a floating interest rate. Okay. So uh, actually, I think I'll, I'll put the I'll make it in U.S. dollars so that we can trade three-month Euro-dollar futures, which is the most liquid uh, interest rate contract on the on the short end. So you will have a three uh, the U.S. dollar. We make a uh, a loan in U.S. dollars. Okay. So uh, then you have to trade three-month Euro-dollar futures as well. So these are the markets you'll have to trade. So what we are going to set up now is like we're going to go to our software because we are setting up our backup software. Is everyone following so far? Okay, now what we want to do is, so there's something called a profile as well, okay? There's a profile as well. Profile is nothing but, a profile in this software is nothing but an arrangement of windows, okay? It's just a bunch of windows, you want to arrange it in some way, like suppose I'm not happy with this small chart over here, I want another big chart, I can just open graph in new window okay i can open another graph and then when i save this profile next time i load the profile it will have two charts like this okay it'll have two windows okay that's what profile means so i just want to create a new profile if you want you can create a new profile let's do that uh it will be under tool okay um okay the way you create a new profile is you first you see what you want first you create what you want create the windows and the layout that you want and then you save it as the so save current profile as okay so what we're going to do is we'll create a window that we want so we want to see the account summary we want to see a chart on this side and then what we are going to do is we're going to change this entire rates panel display so we want to bring in the markets that we're interested in here i don't see some of the markets that we want okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to tools user preferences and go to rates all right now i need to knock off all this stuff but i won't do that i want to just try and save my time uh let me see what we have oh, this got everything actually here we just want to okay so uh, 
so here the highlighting system is a little bit odd you gotta get used to it uh, once you click on something unless you click it back it remains highlighted okay so I want to push this to the top so this is one of the things we are interested in we're not interested in wheat can you see anything else what is the other thing that we want so you can actually practice with a lot of commodities on this account you have dollar rupee also where is gold you see gold here okay so you see that I highlighted West Texas and I highlighted gold but first I should move up the West Texas because it's uh, let me just move this stuff up all right let me just deselect gold and just move up West Texas because okay so okay now I need uh, I'll, I'll move both of these up close to copper okay so then we have this then we'll highlight copper also and we'll start moving this entire lot up no Brent we don't need we want a West Texas okay so I'm just showing you okay right on top we have the three commodities that we want now we need uh, um, okay I just want to push the euro down so that we have dollar yen and then uh, Aussie okay it covers everything that we want except that we don't have the three month euro dollar futures now this is your choice if you want you can I'm not going to waste my time doing that but if you want you can remove let's say for instance if I want to remove the euro okay I highlight the euro and I click on remove okay so I can do that now if you want you can remove all the other markets which you're not interested in okay so you can do that or you can just leave them here so we've covered pretty much everything that we need at this point we have the three commodities we have the two currencies and the three month euro dollar futures you can't see over here at the most what you want if you want it's not going to help you much uh, so it's no point but the US 10 year T note is here if you want uh, US or two year T notes but this is not going to be of much help but anyway so this is what you can keep if you want you can keep the two-year note and the ten-year note okay uh, near to see how US interest rate move uh, rates are moving okay is everyone following so far what no response yes, sir. yeah so you have to respond like everybody is half dead and sleeping okay all right so then you just load this stuff then you apply and save okay so you got this stuff so what you've got is well let's say if we do this as all right so we have this then we have the markets that we want and then what I'm going to do is if you want you can create a I'm just going to keep the number of windows minimum if you want as I showed you you can pop out the chart create another ch another chart you can pop out all this stuff okay you can change the rates panel display to this uh, or you can change it in this form which is the easy way to look at it the bid offer okay you can pop this out as a separate window if you want whatever you want to have okay so you can set up your own settings once you're satisfied with the settings you have okay then you can just go to tools and then do save current profile okay now profile manager save current profile as you want to save it as a separate profile and then you can just save this profile as um, IFM okay. all right so now the profile is saved if you go back to tools and profile now you can see this new profile is this clear to everyone okay so it's pretty simple I'm just making sure that you know what the steps are so once you've got this set up now this is just all for our backup software <coughs> but likely at least it'll introduce you to another piece of software okay so this you've got this now you can set it up and then you can start practicing in those two this these instruments okay because you'll have to train these instruments there will be a restriction essentially but we won't discuss etc you'll be allowed to train only from one side mainly but you get used to how the market is moving get familiar with these markets this is that I'm just making sure because we still don't have clarity on the GWS we will see what is happening with Bashar's account but that's why I'm setting up the backup account so that we have at least I need to have some assurance that at least one software is ready and we can move with the project even if the GWS doesn't work 
and now we'll try to make the GWS work. What happens? If, no, people are not convinced. So what I'm saying? What? Sorry? It's working, we'll see, but that's why I wanted to set up the backup also. Okay, so that we are uh, doubly sure we have a backup. Because I don't know whether the GSSC, I, I have to see to what extent the GWS is working. I haven't checked that yet, okay? So I've given you the introduction on the backup, now you can follow this and do this. Set up the backup and make sure you're familiar. Because the charts will not look different on the TWS. Your uh, chart is the same. Okay, in fact, the charting system on this <coughs> software is much better than TWS. Okay, it is simpler, it's a smaller piece of software, and you can get the same charts, you can get a lot of studies. So you could actually use this as your charting software, and then you could do your training on TWS if you actually do that. All right, so let me just see. Okay, so this is um, Tushar's TWS. Okay, so let's see if the crude oil. Sorry? Okay, so the order is filled. There's no deal. There's no error message. So let me try and set up the other accounts. Um, let me just test this quickly. I can test it quickly and uh, figure this out. Okay. So, um, one sec, guys. Please pay attention here also. Because in case it works, earlier I was getting a data error message on the when I moused over the bid and offer. So I'm not getting that now. So one of the instruments that you're gonna have is the crude oil contract. Okay. And when you when you see when you click on futures contracts, remember I showed you the chart in, uh, in, on bar chart. I showed you the entire term structure of futures prices. Do you remember that? Yes, when we were discussing term structure, yes, we looked at the term structure of crude oil futures yes, prices. Yes, Remember that? Okay. So all these futures, because whenever you have a futures contract, you have many months trading. Yes, so you need to uh, indicate what are you doing. You're reducing it. Yes, sir. No, no, don't reduce it. Students are feeling cold. Students are feeling cold. Yes, wear a sweater. <laughs> wear a sweater. Next time, wear a sweater. Okay. Hey, don't switch it off. It's very warm. Switch it off. I'm walking around. I'm talking, so I need to make sure. That, I mean, I need to be comfortable. Okay, you guys should bring a sweater. It's shawl or sweater. Okay. So whenever you try to add now this contract, you have to trade in crude oil futures. So that is already there in Tushar's uh, account. So that's already been set up. So you can see that. Okay. But now we need to set up the other contracts. Okay. So I'm just going to show you the tickers, and this is what you have to remember. That these are the tickers. For copper, the ticker is. <laughs> We're going to set up copper next. The copper ticker is HG. H for uh, home. G for God. HG because the contract is it's a contract the grade of copper is high grade copper okay so you have to remember this okay you can note it down if you want the contract for copper the copper ticker is going to be like crude oil is CL okay for copper is HG H for home G for God like in crude oil we had much like these yeah yeah so you have to see this once you enter see what happens I just entered HG when I enter HG, the system is already, the system knows that I'm referring to NYMEX copper, okay? So it is now, I have to choose either I want the index or do I want futures options or do I want futures? So when I click on futures, you can see that the system is giving you a whole bunch of uh, futures that you can do, all right? So these are the three futures contracts that you can trade. So let us go for, we are in September, let's go for October, later on I'll show you how to choose. Um, you can actually choose here as well, but let's just choose one contract at a time. So let me choose October. All right, so October futures for high-grade copper. So the HE is because the copper that is traded on the NYMEX is 
high grade copper there's also a copper traded in London that would be a different grade and specification so this is something that you learn about commodity markets that in all commodity markets the grade of the commodity is also important okay you'll see when you look at the copper contract on the NYMEX you see how much it has specified everything in detail copper cathodes this that you can reread the contract specs okay all right so the next contract that we have is gold the ticker for gold is GC G for God C for Canada when I enter GC this system understands that I'm referring to NYMEX gold and then I click on futures and again in the case of gold let's choose the October futures this is uh, the last the contract is terminating expiring on um, 29th of October okay so all right so we got these three contracts now I'll just test a few things because I earlier I was getting these looks like the TWS will actually work for us let's see if we can this is okay this is not a problem in terms of physical delivery okay so they won't pass the contract so maybe we should actually um, maybe we should actually try to um, I'm trying to buy just trying to sell but I think it's anyway it's okay because it's not giving me the other type of error message yeah Filled. okay so I already spilled so this seems to be that uh, it seems that everything is working now so I got the three commodity contracts I also need the futures for um, Aussie dollar and yen Australian dollar we don't want I uh, we want futures okay Australian dollar futures here we are going to choose uh, this is September we can choose October 15th okay all right now let's see the I've forgotten the is it yen uh, now we go for Japanese yen should be at the end okay at the end you'll find Japanese yen click okay now it's asking you Japanese yen futures okay now let's choose uh, October October 15 okay do you notice something odd about the Japanese yen code it's not exponential so when you see now this is the difference between spot and futures markets in a way it's good that we kept this okay so look at this here look at the dollar yen code over here can you see that here the dollar yen code here is okay this is quoted as this 11284 11286 here this is dollar is the base currency okay so here if you find the contract this main idea is that so here the base currency is dollars and the unit is one okay in the spot so this is where you see the difference between spot and futures market in the uh, markets in the case of uh, currencies in the spot market for currencies when you're looking at dollar yen the base currency is dollars okay in the futures market and the unit is one in the spot market the base currency is dollars and the unit is one so this 112.84 is uh, dollar is 112.84 yen per dollar for one dollar for one dollar okay but when you go to the futures market okay the currency futures markets the system is reversed the, the reason the quote looks odd like this is because here the base currency is now yen okay and the unit is I'll have to check I think it's uh, 62,500 we'll check that okay so it's a uh, I'll just I'll just I'll just uh, that's the contract size okay let's just go back and check because I don't even I also don't remember exactly what the unit is well let's okay so we can check that later on but mainly the difference is 
uh, you can actually work out what it is because it won't be very different from the spot price okay although this price and remember now here guys understand this we just looked at the two different quotes for dollar yen all right so this one is a spot market quote sorry this quote is dollar yen is 112.85 bid that is a spot market quote spot market. okay so the instrument is spot so if you trade on this if you sell dollars at 112.85 you will have to deliver those dollars on T plus 2 basis. Okay, so assuming there are no holidays now in this week in Tokyo or in the US, then today is what Wednesday. Yes. So this contract will settle if you if you now sell dollar yet, if you sell dollars at 112.85, you will have to deliver the dollars on Thursday, Friday. In Friday, Friday in New York, you'll have to deliver the dollars and you will get your yen also in Friday on Friday in, in Tokyo. Okay, is everyone clear about this? This is a spot price. All right. Now, what is the maturity of this futures contract? Sir, it's correct. Don't speak in Hindi. It's for current market price. Which is showing all are showing current prices. Everything is showing you current prices. There's nothing here which is non-current. <laughs> what is non-current is all those equity prices like Apple and all which I knocked out, which is because the market is closed. Everything you see now is all current prices. No, no, no. Why should it be spot market? If the instrument is spot, then it is spot market. Here you're not looking at the here. What you're looking at spot once again. Euro. We can see it together one sec. Let's do this. Let's compare it in one one view. Okay. Let's compare it in one view. Let me add here. Let me add here. Dollar yen spot. This is comma or full stop. I need full stop. Okay, if I enter USD.JPY, okay, now the system knows that I'm looking for spot. What happened? So why is it not responding? Okay, it's already there. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay, so let's bring that fellow here. Let's bring this fellow here and see. Okay, now can you see this? Okay, nothing is not current here. Everything is current prices. Okay, I mean, maybe the futures price will not move much. Because, but it should be moving. And even that is quite uh, actively traded. Okay, but obviously here you're looking at two different prices. Okay, dollar yen USD JPY is spot dollar yen. That's why you see the price is close to what you see on Amanda, one twelve eighty four and one twelve eighty five. Okay, the same price, more or less at, at the same level. Okay, so this is OTC markets. USD dot JPY is OTC markets. It is spot dollar yen. Okay, connect all the concepts that you have learned so far. USD dot JPY, what you see on that row against the USD dot JPY, okay, that is an OTC market quote. And that is a, so the market for the structure of the market, the institutional structure of the market is OTC, it's not exchange traded for the USD dot JPY, okay. And the instrument is spot. So if you trade now, if you sell dollars at 1282, okay, on this price, on this bid. You will have to deliver those dollars. Today is Wednesday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Your dollar the settlement date will be Friday. Assuming no holidays in New York or, or Tokyo. Okay? In between no holidays in New York or Tokyo, then your settlement date will be uh, Friday. Yes. So my if I am buying USD dot JPY, then the delay is between this interactive broker and me only. And no, no, no. No, this, other parties no, this is actually because uh, I'm coming to that part actually. That is the broker and the uh, market maker aspect. Here, interactive is a market. Again, you can see in these two different pieces of software. So, in a way, it's good that we use the Wanda as well because you'll get to see a lot of differences as well. Interactive brokers, okay, functions as a broker. All right. You understand the difference between a broker and market maker? A broker is a middleman. Okay, so if I am selling my house to Arya directly and Arya, Arya is buying for himself and there is no broker in between, okay, then we are dealing as principals. It is I am the owner of the house and he wants to stay in the house, he wants to buy the house and stay in it. So he is buying, so he is a principal, he is acting as for his own account and I am also acting for my own account, I am selling it, okay. So this is a principal to principal transaction. Okay, so when market makers deal with each other, they, they are dealing with each other as principals. Okay, but now in this, when I sell to Arihan, suppose I don't know Arihan, I engage GABA as a broker. Okay, so he will just collect a commission. 
So he knows Arihan, and he knows me as well. So he connects the two of us. So the sale goes through. Now bro, Gamma is functioning as an agent. He is functioning as, let's say, my agent for selling the house. And then he gets hold of Arihan, then we, the transaction will be written as, again, I'm selling to Arihan. But in this case, there's a broker in between. So Kaba is functioning as an agent. He is not functioning as a principal because he is not dealing for his own account. Okay, he is functioning as an agent. Okay, so is this clear to everybody? The difference between functioning as a principal and functioning as an agent. I'm just coming to that now. TWS, yeah, we're just coming to that. So essentially here now, so you're right actually. So the TWS, the interactive brokers, is a broker. Okay, they are not dealing as a principal. So the difference between interactive brokers and OANDA is OANDA is a market maker. So when you deal with OANDA, when you're dealing on the OANDA software, you're dealing with OANDA as a market maker. So it's a principal to principal transaction. Is everyone following this? Okay, because you're also a principal, you're acting for your own account. OANDA is a market maker. So that's a principal to principal transaction. Here, interactive brokers as a broker, they function as an agent. Okay. Although they also have a market making arm within interactive brokers, but that we should treat as a separate market making arm. Okay, it is part of the overall corporate entity, but we should not confuse the two things. Just like we said, when there's a deal with the introducing broker, and when the when the clearing member is also an introducing broker, you still see it as two transactions, two parties. Okay, so IB is a uh, broker. It is functioning as an agent. So when you click, coming back to the Bankshu's question, the Bankshu's question is that if I sell dollar yen in the spot market at 112.78. Okay, both are 78 actually, but anyway. So we look at the bid side. Okay, 112.78, if you see, uh, you see how tight the price is in spot effects for the major currencies, can you see how tight the pricing is? Okay, because it's now almost getting towards the London, close to the London Open. And in, when London comes in, maybe it'll get even tighter. You see how tight the spreads are. Okay, this is what happens when you have a liquid market. When you have a liquid market, when you have high levels of speculation. Okay, one of the things you notice in our, one of the problems in our country is because we have shut out speculation, we have also shut out liquidity. And because we have shut out liquidity, then our transaction price, transaction costs are much higher. Okay, you should understand because in this country, you know, everybody is a socialist. It's very hard to find people who understand the value of speculation. You should learn this. That speculation is not a bad thing necessarily because in speculation in markets you can get it automatically adds to liquidity. In the foreign exchange markets, in the spot foreign exchange market, which is the biggest market in the world, okay, five point trillion per dollars, five point one trillion per day, about ninety-five percent of the transactions are speculative. Okay, but what do I care? If I am a corporate dealing in the foreign exchange market, I care about tight bid off or spreads. If I want to get in and out quickly, or even if I am a speculator. I care about tight bid offer spreads and a liquid market. Okay, I, what do I care if you're a speculator or a hedger? It doesn't affect me. As long as you're not cheating me, right? I don't care about that. So you see how tight the spreads are. Okay. So this is what happens in a liquid market, and dollar yen is one of the major, uh, you know, uh, currency pairs in the global FX markets. All right. So as everyone, and now if I click on this, you'll find that the deal goes through. Essentially, if you click on this, and let's say if I try to sell here. Filled. Okay, so you get the auto fill. So essentially, this deal will now go later on when you look at your deal ticket. Okay, because IB is a uh, is a market maker. Uh, sorry, is a is a broker. Okay, so eventually this this price has been supplied by some market maker. So if you look at the underlying deal ticket, okay, you will see because here you are just uh, trading using the software. If you look at the underlying deal ticket, this will be some market maker like Barclays London or City New York. Or somebody who's who put that price, somebody who put up that price, okay, somebody who had put up that 12, 1, 12, 80, those prices are coming from different market makers. It's not the average, it's an actual price. Average need not be any actual price, it's an actual price. Somebody put up that bid of 112.78. Yeah, different people will put up different bids, but you notice that these prices are tight because they will always show you this is what I want to discuss. Uh, what. Uh, yesterday, uh, Giri and uh, Shivani were discussing about prices. Okay, so every time, all these prices are the best bid and the best offer. All the prices that these guys show you, this, these are all basically the best bid and the best offer. Okay. 
No, but, but the price can move, right? The difference is small at the current level. The difference is small at the current level, right? So if you hold on to the position over three days, five days, the overall price can move, right? I mean, if you look at if you look at dollar yen, what has been happening in the last few days? So Tanuj is asking that if uh, you have to trade necessarily in large amounts, that's not true necessarily. Look at it. If you see, for instance, this is just a four-hour chart. If you look at something like say one hour you can see how much dollar yen has moved in the last few days right so this is what this is 6th of september so 6th of september is a 110.42 and today it is already at 112.80 right so if you think of now if you think if you take this further if you buy this now if you if you buy this i sold of course in the transaction in the testing transaction if you buy this now all right it could move up to even 115 in the next week or 10 days right so it is not necessary that Tanuja's question is that because the bid offer spread is so small do I have to trade in huge quantities okay that's only true if uh, you know that and that is actually not connected to the bid offer spread bid offer spread you will always lose because you're a price taker so that huge one you don't have to trade because the price can also move your position may be small but the price can move a huge amount right the price can move a big amount okay so all right let's go back to this so so when you trade on the IP website and then eventually the trade is going okay Nakpal you lose some marks you're actively now you've taken up the mantle from Ayush so later on we'll deduct marks from your team so um, so what is what is happening here all these prices have been posted by some market maker or the other okay or maybe even an investor okay so if let's say that Kaba wants to buy dollar yen okay he wants to buy dollar yen so he might see that the price is 112.81 so he might actually post a price of 112.82 see now it is one and three or three and four it is shifting all the time two and four so Kaba might post a three there if he wants to buy dollar yen okay so he has posted a better price so all the time what the system displays to you is the highest bid and the lowest offer okay because the system always wants you to trade gives you an incentive to trade so they will always show the highest bid and the lowest offer is this point clear to everybody so there are many prices in the market quantity also makes a difference now you see that here nine on the left nine million the 9M is 9 million. That price is for 5 million. Now this price is for 4 million. 4 million you see the bids. 4 million is uh, the total trade that No, 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 no. See that 4 million, you see the first column. You see uh, the second column. Second column, okay, on the bid side to the left of the bid. That 9 million, 6 million, 2 million, 4 million. All that stuff that is changing. That means that 1284 price. That means the bid price is good for 5 million dollars. 4 million, 8 million, 9 million, 6 million. Is everyone following this? If the quantity will be Make sure that million, sorry? If the quantity will be not like the quantity will stay then we post the 11 million or maybe less than No, no. That price, see, the price is good for now, the price is good for 1 million. You can still trade 250,000. You can decide your own quantity. Okay? Yeah, maximum, at this point what it shows, this price is only good for 2 million max or 3 million max. So you can trade for 250,000 if you want. Override it. Yeah, not overriding transfer won't apply here. They, here there will be no need to override anything. The, it's showing you that this price, the current bid price is good for 2 million right now. Okay, 3 million right now, 10 million, 9 million, 2 million, etc. Alright, so that means that that particular bid is good for 2 million. On the right side also you can see the offers. The offers are good for 1 million, 2 million, 3 million. But, no, 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 no. There is no average business. These are actual prices. So somebody has it, it can be split up into average also. The system is showing you. Like suppose there are people who have posted the bid of 11281. Okay, let's forget the last decimal because it's changing so fast. Okay. So let's say the bid of 11281 has been posted. There's a total of four million. That could be coming from it doesn't have to be an average. It doesn't have to be an average, okay? And it's not an average, there's no average in here. What could happen is that 11281 bid, now it's say $3 million, okay? That 3 million may have been uh, composed of three different people who are willing to buy up to 1 million. 
or it could be even one person who is willing to buy up to one million. Is everyone following what is being discussed? Everyone seems to have fallen asleep. No, sir. Everyone is asleep. <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, are you following this part? Okay. So, the two million that you see, that could either be one ticket. So, if you hit that bid for 11281, down it's four million. Okay. That four million, if you want to trade for the full four million amount, that could either be one ticket of four million. Okay. Maybe Barclays London has posted a bid for four million, or it could be four different tickets with four different banks for one million each. Okay. No, I think I, I. I mean, generally there is no option to view that. You see that only after you execute. Well, why do you need that? You are not interested in that. I mean, I don't really care how many. Remember when we were doing transactions on the NSE? You would do a transaction and you see that it's split up into one share at this price, one share at this price. Average, average, average comes to that. Okay. So that's what the system is doing. So you are not really interested as long as your net cost is the same, right? Is net cost is what you want. You are not interested in all these uh, splits. Okay. You just need to make sure that because these are going to be OTC contracts, you need to make sure that you have limits for those banks. Yeah. yeah, but prices can't be too different, no, because they will be arbitraged against each other. You see here the bid is 112.82. Now look at the Oanda price. What is the Oanda price? 112.82. <laughs> yeah, the third decimal may be a little bit here and there, but it can't be very different. Even after the second decimal, it's the same. The price cannot differ too much because everyone knows these markets and they know the price. So if the price in Oanda moves away too much from IB, they will buy from IB and sell to Oanda or vice versa. So the arbitrage will keep the prices in line. You can't have two different prices for the same market, so the same market, same instrument. You can't have two different prices. Because people will buy from here and sell to the other market. No, no, no. He is taking the prices from. No, I'm just asking. He is imposing the price and taking from market maker or individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these prices are coming from market maker feeds. These prices are coming from market maker feeds. Okay. So the point I wanted to illustrate from yesterday. So is everyone following so far? Okay, these are the bid size. Remember that, can you see the column over there? Guys, can you see the column on top? Yes. Under pending all, can you see the bid size? Yes, and bid size and bid and then ask and ask size. So that's what that means, okay? So that bid is good for that amount, okay? Maximum of that amount. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, but exchanges also there is market. Those are market makers and people putting it is basically coming from the same software. I think market participants. You can make of market participants, other market makers and speculators. Because I gave you the example that if GABA wants to buy dollar yen, he may put in a more attractive bid. The best bid right now is 82.8. He may put in 82.9 to make it more attractive, then he will go to the top of the book. But the exchange is giving the price of shares? No, no, exchanges are not giving the broker the price. Exchange is just a platform. Okay? So you can just think of different market players like speculators, market makers interacting with each other. Okay? And posting prices. So as I said here, GABA can also post a price better than the current bid. Then his bid will go to the top of the book. Okay? Yeah. yeah, you could say that. That's a fair comment. That there isn't that much compared to equities and commodities. The volatility in that foreign exchange is much less. That is correct. Okay. Yes. It could be because uh, currencies are more liquid. It could be because they are more liquid. It's a difficult question to answer. Why, the, why is the volatility less? Dealing in that will the prices. Not really. I mean, uh, depends on the market where where you are at the market. I mean, which market you're in. 
don't worry so much about who is quoting the prices. You have the prices, okay? The main thing to understand is that at any point, the prices that you see that uh, are uh, basically they are posted by anybody. It could be posted by a market maker. It could be posted by a because you could see one side. See, one side of this price could be coming from a speculator. Like I gave the example. If you want to buy dollar yen, you might post a price of 83.5. Or okay, you would also buy it at, you won't post it higher than the offer, you will buy it at the offer itself. But here the spreads are so tight. Okay. So let's look like the, let's look at the example of uh, high grade copper. Let's look at the copper price. So the bid is now 2880.15. This doesn't trade that actively in the uh, off hours. So the bid on copper is 2.8015 and 2.8025 is the offer. Okay. Now now it's changed to 1020. So now let's say GABA wants to buy at but he is desperate to buy copper. What he'll do is he'll put in a bid of 20, 50, uh, he'll put in a bid of 17, okay, or 16, or 15 half, okay. So obviously you can't put 15 half here, it doesn't go there. But he will put, he will put 16 or 20, okay, it's moving in five, uh, in increments of five on the fourth decimal. So he can quote, uh, in this case, he can put uh, 20. Let's assume that the bid, uh, is everyone following what I'm saying here? that you can improve the bid. So the price can come from either a market maker or any particular speculator who wants to post because you are connected to the trading system. You have the right to enter the prices. Okay, if you've got account equity in your account. Okay, and you can enter prices and you can also post a price. Okay, so price is coming. So just think of, uh, I mean, I understand this can be a legitimate query where is the price coming from. But just think of it as coming from market makers or speculators. And the broker and the software that is displaying it to you is just showing you the. In the case of Wanda, there is no confusion. Everything, all prices are coming from Wanda, okay? Because Wanda is a market maker. So he is trading at the principal. So every price you see here is coming only from Wanda. And you can't enter any prices here. You can just trade on these prices, okay? Or you can leave a limit order. Alright, so every price here is coming from Wanda because it's a principal trading system. Okay, here you are trading with this company as the principal. Whereas in the case of TWS, it's a broker software. So here, everybody who is connected to TWS can post prices. So some guy sitting in Singapore can post post a price if he's also on the TWS. Okay, if he wants to post a better price for uh, copper, he can post a better price. In this case, he can post 15. The bid, best bid is 10. He can post 15 if he's desperate to buy. So then his 15 will show on the screen. Is everyone clear about this? Again, if he wants to, yeah, if he wants to sell now, right now the best offer is 25. Now if Gaba is desperate to sell, he can put in an offer of 20. He can put an offer of 20 and people will obviously prefer to buy from him. Is this clear? So the moment you put in the best, whatever price you put in, the system will always show you the best bid and offer. Okay? Now you see the prices are becoming more active. Maybe I don't know what the time is. Uh, maybe London is coming in early London timing. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So something around that uh, you will see that prices when early London comes in, you see that foreign exchange prices become more active. Okay. So that is the biggest market in the world in terms of the currencies. The biggest currency trading market. Okay. So London is very big for most of the instruments. And precious but, metals also. Sorry? Precious metals also. Precious metals also. Precious metals also. Right? Yes? Okay. Guys, so the first point after all these discussions, the point we are trying to clarify is that the system is always going to show you the best bid and the best offer. The highest bid and the highest offer. Okay? So there is a term for this in the US for US equities and uh, the, the, the term that they use is it's a useful concept to understand. It's called NBBO, the National Best Bid and Offer. Okay, National Best Bid and Offer, which means nothing but you know that they are required to execute. The brokers are required to execute at the best bid and the best offer. Okay, so you can think of this as so the, the, the in a trading system, the system will always show you the best bid and offer. Okay, especially in a brokers uh, and even a principal trading system, you'll see only the best bid and offer. Okay, now this thing is called yes. <coughs> Yeah. They themselves are a market maker. Oanda themselves is a market maker. So he is just standing there and quoting prices. Yeah. 
Coanda doesn't quote equity prices as such, but if you if they did, then it will be from Coanda. If you are trading on the Coanda platform, see if you are trading on the Coanda platform, that is their own proprietary platform. So they are a market maker. So every price you see there is a Coanda price. They are not taking price. They may separately be trading later on with other people, but on the face of it, at least at that instant, your trade is with Coanda. Yeah, what is the price maker? Because it is a market maker, it is functioning as a principal. Okay. Which organization? In India. Most of these uh, securities firms will be market makers in some of these securities. Okay. Eaglewise or HDFC, ICSS securities. All of these will be market makers. No, no, no. One sec. Okay, guys, one more point let's be clear about. Okay. The principal trading firms, okay, like Wanda, principal trading firms do not charge a commission, okay, normally. They will not charge a commission, okay. So they're, they're making their money in, uh, let's say if you see Wanda here. So if you see the prices here, the spread of dollar yen, you just focus on dollar yen. So you see this price 82, 6, 80, and 84, okay. So here you see that 1.4 is the bid offer spread. Okay, here the 1.4 is the bid offer spread. So Oanda is a principal, okay, it is functioning as a market maker, it's a principal, and it is not going to charge you a commission. So the principal trading firms who are functioning as market makers, they would ordinarily not charge you a commission, and they will make their money through the bid offer spread. So the question is if they're not charging a commission, how are they making money? They make their money from the bid offer spread because you might be trading on the bid side. Some other guy will come and trade on the offer side, and they will make a lot of. They'll do a lot of volume throughout the day, and that's how they'll make their money. So the principal trading firms will make their money through the bid offer spread. Those who are quoting as market makers, trading as market makers, they will make their money on the bid offer spread. Okay, those principal trading firms who are trading as speculators, who are not necessarily quoting prices. They'll make their money on the directional movement. So like they might have bought oil at 50.4. Now oil has gone, they will, buy it, they will buy it. Remember these are directional speculators. So we contrasted market makers who are not making a bet on the directional movement of the market. But there are also directional speculators who basically take a position and sit on it. Expecting that the market will move up or move down in some, in some direction. Okay. So let's say there's a speculator who also trades as a principal. Okay, so he buys oil at 50.4 and then he sits on it and then when it goes to 70.5 etc. Then he will sell it okay, and make a profit. So he is making a profit based on the direction of movement. No, broker makes his profit one minute. Let's be clear about this. So now we understand the principal trading entities. The market makers and the speculators are principal trading entities. Okay, so the market makers will make their money on the bid offer spread expecting very high volumes to be traded on either side and then the not much movement ideally in the market okay and then they pick up the they can nicely pick up the entire bid offer spread okay on a large volume that's how market makers make their money they don't charge a commission they, they make their money from the bid offer spread okay then high volumes of trading and the bid offer spread that's how they make their money the speculators the directional speculators they are also principal trading firms how do they make their money they take a view on the market Okay, somebody gets bullish on crude oil, he buys it at 50-40, he sits on it, it goes to 70-40, then he sells it and makes the money. Is this clear? So these guys are making money based on the direction of the market's movement, by getting the direction right. Okay, so that these are the two types of, uh, you know, the uh, speculative, uh, speculative entities. The market makers who are not directional speculators, then you have the directional speculators. So these are all trading, both, both types of speculators are trading as principal, okay. That's why the market maker doesn't charge a commission. Now, when you go to IV, if you notice IV when you trade, when you were trading on NSE, what was happening to you? We saw that they were charging you commissions. Did you see that? Yes. Okay, so they were charging you commissions. Now, that's what the brokers do. Brokers don't make money on whatever you were saying, bid offer spread or market movement, anything. Breaker, brokers are only interested in collecting a commission. If you do a transaction with them, they will collect a commission. So if you see IB, when you look at, if you go to the IB website, you can check that uh, you will see that they have an entire schedule of commissions. 
for any given market, they will quote the schedule of commissions. Okay. So IP being a broker, they're functioning as an agent, not as a principal. Their job is to basically charge you a commission on every transaction. Okay. So that's how is everyone clear about this? The two categories, the different categories. Okay. And how they make their money. And so these guys, the brokers, they're functioning as an agent, and they make their money as in commissions. Okay, they are not interested in whether the market has gone after you bought from IB. He doesn't really care whether the market goes up or down. But he has no position. He has just matched your position with some other party. Just like Gaba was brokering the real estate transaction between me and Aryan. He is not interested. Gaba is not interested in whether after Aryan buys the house, whether the price of the house falls or rises. He is not bothered he wants because he has collected his commission and gone. Okay, because he is a broker. Yes. So the spreads, these are not uh, end prices. Remember, I told you the prices are entered by market players. So either the market makers or the directional speculators, they have entered these prices. IB itself is not entering any of these prices. It's just a platform. So if you trade on their platform, they will just collect a commission. Okay, and they have connected this platform to all the different market players. Okay, is everyone clear? Okay, all right. So we were coming back to the idea. So we have learned a few concepts here. Now we are coming. <laughs> this is so heavy. Most of the people are chatting here and there. Okay, here again, I have to deduct Max Giri, Prachi, and who is next to Prachi? I can't see. Tanvi. Okay, now let's do some deductions. We have. I can also rest my voice while I do some deductions. Where is Prachi? Which group is she in? Same, okay. So Tanvi's group will lose. Okay, so Tanvi will score minus 6. So this in this course, we will only have negative CP. Okay, so Tanvi is. I don't see Prachi in this group. Where is Prachi? Okay, so this group will also go to minus six top scorers, but then we also have to have another top scorer, a new. Now Ayush has retired. Now new man of the series <laughs> aspirant is Nagpal. Akanksha's group. No, where is Nagpal? Yes, minus four. Okay, so this is a useful sheet to have open. All right. Okay, guys. So what have we learned? It's been a long session, but it's good that at least Dipankar was asking a lot of questions until his own thing is own uh, idea is clear. So this is how it works because everybody has to understand things from their own point of view. So that's why you need to, and that's why you come to class mainly to ask questions so that you can understand it from your own unique perspective. Okay. All right. So what have we learned? Bids and offers we already knew. We learned about principal trading firms and those who trade as agents. And we've learned that agents collect a commission. They don't charge a bid offer spread. Okay. They charge, and principals don't charge a commission. They make money if they're a market maker. They'll make money as on the bid offer spread. If they're a directional speculator, they'll make money on the big moves in the market. They'll take a position and sit on it, and hopefully it'll move in their favor. This is clear. Okay. Now we also learned that the system always shows you the best bid and the best offer, the highest bid and the high and the lowest offer. Okay. So this is called the new term that you want to learn is. This is called the top of the book. Now you've got to get used to this term called book. Just like your book, you know, which you're writing in, the exercise book. Now in trading in financial markets, we use the term book to indicate any kind of account, essentially. Here also this is used as a book. Okay. So this is this is called the top of the book. Okay, let's take uh, copper because this dollar yen prices are so tight and so changing so frequently. So copper right now is uh, 55, 65. Okay, this is the top of the book. This is called the top of the book. The best bid and offer is called the top of the book. Okay, so here this is called. Why is the book? The book is basically nothing but the order book. The order book, which is the sequence of entire set of orders which are there, there in the system. Not a record of the transactions. It's called the order book. It's the lineup of different orders that are there in the system. Okay. One minute, let me just show you something. What is meant by order book? Okay, let's see one thing. Okay. 
So this is one example of an order book. Um, let's look at the open orders. One minute, let me show it to you here, it's better. Okay, all right guys, one sec. Please look at the euro now. Let's focus on the euro. This is the top of the book. Let me just see where the... I'll just cancel this. I forgot where I got. Okay, guys, let's look at this now. Okay, now we were looking at the euro and I clicked on the book trader. Okay. Now, can you see this? Can you see this? What is happening? 69. What is the top of the book? What is the top of the book right now? 69 bid and 69.5 is the offer. What is the offer? The offer is 70. Okay. 69.5 is the offer and 69 is the bid. Can you see that? Because the green is the offer and the yellow is the bid. No, no. Not forget about blue, we'll come to what the blue is. But the green lines are offer. Now the offer is 69 and the bid is 85. We are interested all the time in the best bid and offer. Okay, the best bid right now again is become 69 half. The best offer is 00. That is called figure basically. So 00. Are you following? Essentially 70. Okay, we should say 70. So then one minute guys. Okay, one minute. Let's freeze the screen right now. Forget about what is the change. One sec, one sec, one sec. The best bid and offer right now is 69 and 70. 69 half, 70. Best bid is 69 half and the best offer is 70. Okay, that will keep on changing now. It's dropped a little bit. 69, 69 half. So, one minute, not one minute. Let me finish. So, first thing to be clear about in this market right now, the best bid, the top of the book is 69, 69 half. Right now. 69, 69 half. Is this clear? Okay. Now this is what is meant by, so this is what is called an order book. Can you see some other figures also? The 70 is 2.2 million, 69 half is 7 million, 69 is 21 million, 68 half, the price is dropping. The price is actually dropping because now the best bid is only 80. Okay. So, and the best bid, now you see all the 24 million. Okay. So what's happening is, you can see this is an order book. This is what is called an order book. So at any point of time, the system, okay, all those who are participating in the market through this TWS system, they are all entering prices. Some of these guys are market makers. Some of these guys are just directional speculators. But everybody has an interest in the market, okay? So they are entering their prices, okay? And this is what you see as the order book. And each price has to be mentioned as good for what amount, okay? When you enter a price, obviously the system will always ask you good for what amount. Okay, so one sec, we'll just quickly finish this top part. This is meant by this is what is meant by an order book. Okay, you understood what is the top of the book? And the rest of the book is basically when you see, can you see uh, above the best bid? I mean, above the lowest offer. One minute, I'll just disconnect it. Just give me two minutes, we'll finish it. We'll finish this topic. This is called the market depth. So you can see the top of the book, but you can see beyond that. You can see more than that. That's why this is called the market depth. Okay, this view is called the market depth. So you can see some stuff. Right now, the best of the best bid is 69 half, but you can also see that there was 8 million at a lower price. Okay, then you can see all the prices. So the stuff that is there below the top of the book, below and above the top of the book, below the best bid and above the best offer, there are some other off orders also pending. Can you see that? So those numbers are those things when you see the entire order book. That's called the market depth. Okay, so these terms that you're learning, top of the book, coming from the order book concept, this whole thing is an order book. The best bid and offer is the top of the book. And then the rest of it is the market depth. You can see the other information also, beyond the best bid and offer. That's the market depth. 
That's called the market depth. This is clear. So I'll let everybody else go now, and then those who have questions can wait and stay back. Okay. So the we can you guys can leave. What is it? okay? Then I have to see why the 70, 71 is highlighted. But uh, we can see what the green and the yellow is. Okay. Now that blue has gone, we we'll have to see what that blue means. So now the blue is gone. We have to see what that means actually because there is some kind of uh, you know coding, some kind of coding. We have to see what the coding says. So my TWS accounts are also working now. Yeah. Uh, in our group, two TWS accounts are working. Okay. Himani. All right. Okay, guys. Before one sec. Before you leave. What is the blue? Blue. Blue. That I don't know what the coding is. There will be some kind of coding. We have to see the manual for this. But mainly, we are in, what we are interested in is the top of the book and the entire order book. When you see the entire order book, you are seeing the market depth. That term that we use is market depth. When you are evaluating over the entire book, then you Yeah, if you have information on the entire book. Here you can see clearly you have information on more than just the best period offer. You can see more than just that. Okay. Okay, guys, has everybody managed to create? Has everyone's TWS working? Yes, sir. Two yes, sir. Everyone yeah. is working. Two accounts are working now. Anybody? Why two? You should have three. Three or one. You get one more. Uh, so make the third account. No. Two make for sure. Texas and one for. Okay, guys, please give me a report on this. Once all three of your accounts are working and. Uh, and working means one sec. Working means you have to test, try to do a trade on a test account. Okay. Designate a test account. Okay, be clear about this. Please follow the instructions. Okay. Designate a test account because we want to make sure that everything is up and running and be clear about that. I have to send the message to IB that make sure you create all three accounts for each of your groups. The TWS, we're talking about TWS now. Create all the three accounts and designate one as a practice account. In that practice account, you do what I just tried to do on Tushar's account. Okay, so Tushar's account automatically has become now a basket. You saw that I traded in gold, traded in copper, okay, traded in uh, in crude oil. In so make sure you do these trades, okay? Please listen to the instructions. Okay, sir. Okay, do these trades in the futures contracts, set up the futures contracts, do the trades, and see if you get any funny messages like saying you don't have market data. All these kinds of error messages. If you get any of that, uh, in any case, you report to me that you're not getting any of these messages. Okay, what we are watching for is those kind of messages saying your data is not live. Okay, you don't have market data. You have delayed data. No trade with delayed data. These kind of messages we don't want to see. Okay. All right. Okay. Very strange. Uh, you sent me an error message, snapshot. Same message is coming. Why not? Sir, as we sent it to Master Three, that but it's still not working. So my idea is no, 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 no. maybe uh, you know you were trying to be smart. No, you gave an Indian phone number. No, sir, I have given the Singapore phone number. Okay, so that's a proper number. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, give a legitimate number so they may call the person just for marketing stuff. Yes, sir, I have called. Yeah, I have given. The so the, I don't know why it's not working. If you sir, then talk to the head. Sir, the uh, sign up is. Uh, thank you for signing up, sir. The message is proper. So then you get an email. You should get an email saying thank you for signing up. Did you get an email in Oanda? Yes, yeah, from Oanda. We you should get a battery sir, running low. I also so can you didn't get any message. No, I can't use this anymore because my battery is running low. So can you just add the next PC? One minute. Yeah. Okay, it is still shutting down. Okay, so in your case, you are not getting the. Uh, she is not able to log in. So I have got your error message. It's working. But uh, TWS, the error message you sent, the same message is coming. Okay, so I'll follow up on that. In the meantime, you might want to talk to Tushar and see if you're doing something, making a mistake. Because this is working. This ID was working. So that will try. One second. Let me just quickly. Okay, I'm going to have a problem right now. Okay, Sahil.